I'm Kynan Pearson, the lead multiplayer level designer here at 343 Industries. And I'm Lori Zawada. I'm from Certain Affinity in Austin, Texas. We co-developed Forge with 343. The first map that we're going to be taking a look at is Erosion. So this map takes place inside the interior of a cave. Um, you've got some structures, but there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this map. There's basically three major areas of the map. The first is the interior space is used for a griff ball, but you can also treat that as something to do, you know, small scale 4v4 maps. You can put together what you want on the interior, but by default, it's a griff ball court. So you can see that area here. You've got pretty high ceilings and the grid will allow you to kind of snap things and conform things to whatever dimensions you want on the floor. When we travel outside, you can see that we've got a bunch of natural terrain. So this is gonna give you the ability to kind of use some of the unique ramps and caves to do whatever you want with uh, more tiered gameplay. So you've got a lot of these opposing ramps and opposing uh, views that'll give you some dynamic cover when you're on them. So as you're running over, you can engage people, uh, but the terrain gives you that natural cover to be able to back up and, and use that dynamically or to kind of run around through these little nooks and crannies. But again, you can use your forge pieces however you want to block off any of the pads that you would like. So we have this main structure in the back as a landmark, a little pit area over here, and you can see that the level is tiered and kind of moving down. And the last area that you can use in this map is the cave area in the back, which is over the water down here. And you can basically build from bottom to top. A little nook down here in the bottom that gives you stuff so that you could build some of the structures against the walls in the bottom. Um, quite honestly, with this being like the most defined piece of terrain of the Forge maps, uh, it, it gives people a good start if they're trying to find something that's a little bit more directional gameplay with the cliffs, as Kynan said. Other maps kind of start with a little bit more clean slate, which some people could find a little bit intimidating. Uh, and again, you can adjust the stuff by blocking certain tunnels with Forge pieces. You can leave it as is. You could put up giant walls and just cover half this area or um, other situations you could just be completely over the water. So it gives you just a lot of variety for initial starting point. Uh, in terms of how far you can forge up also, if kind of could look up here for a second, it gets, you, you cannot actually go past the, I guess those girders up there, but if you turn 180 and go all the way out, it kind of gives you an idea of how far you can go. And then to the far distant area, there's two giant pillars, which they look close here, but if we actually fly out there, it takes a while to get there. Um, that would be kind of the ending point for this entire forge zone. We wanted to get some kind of moody, atmospheric sort of uh, experience for the forge users, which isn't your bright sun, green grass, and perfect blue water. Yeah, we took a, a lot of time to make sure that we had plenty of variety in the forge palettes so that people could, you know, have different visuals when they were going around. And this was one of the ones that we wanted to make sure was really accessible for early forge users, um, as Lori was saying, with making sure that there's more defined terrain that they can build off of so that they don't have to fill in all of the details themselves. So the next map we're going to look at is Impact, and this is kind of the exterior space map, uh, which gives you, you know, some UNSC structures to work with, as well as just a lot of the natural terrain of the uh, asteroids and the craters, and some open space to build in. You can see that this gives you a definitely a different feel than had existed in Forge World in Halo Reach. Um, there's a lot of unique structures that you can use. You've got this whole natural terrain area uh, that leads around a major structure in the middle. Um, we also have these interconnected kind of uh, debris bits that you can build different structures on and do some interesting stuff with. And if you don't want to have the, the massive uh, UNSC base in the middle, then you can also come out to this one, which gives you a little more open area to use. 
Uh, in addition, you can fly out on either side into just the general space so that you have some open area to do completely unique uh, forge environments just kind of built without using any of the natural terrain at the level but still being able to use the pallet. So going into this central structure, it's a cylindrical room uh, that gives you some unique things that you can do inside here. As you can see, it, it allows you the ability to do multi-tiered structures so you can build uh, things that go, that wind outside and then, you know, come back into. And we also have this area down below. Uh, if you wanted to do a small scale 1v1 map just for fun or whatever, um, you have this lower deck area that has railing and a little bit of ground underneath. But there's a custom piece that you can use to fill this in as well so that you don't have to worry about uh, dropping down if you wanted to use the base interior. The other great thing is that the skybox elements like the, the asteroid belt as well as the, the impact site some of the nebulas give you plenty of um, landmarks uh, for orientation whenever you're building your map so that players understand which direction they're facing just based on the, the skybox alone. We want to help people um, ha with those visual cues without interfering with their gameplay. So you could choose to use that as a gameplay mechanic or never look up. It's up to you. <laughs> And similar to some of the other maps, uh, we wanted to make sure that there was, again, this atmosphere, this mood to this space map where you, you feel like it's cold, you're, you're isolated, but we didn't want to rely too much on the shadows and dark areas where you just cannot see. There are shadows, but they were finely tuned so that the players are not lost, the, the forge pieces are not lost, weapons, everything you could still easily see in those areas. Now we're taking a look at Ravine. Ravine is, is a more classic feel um, for the Forge users of Halo Reach that wanted something that was in the Forerunner style um, that, that had the natural rolling green hills and the, the classic Halo themes. Um, this one's blue sky, green hills, mountains, and some Forerunner structures uh, embedded in some of the rocky areas. All right, so starting off right now, we've got the uh, Forerunner structure area. It gives you some flat ground to use, um, as well as, you know, there's this little nook and cranny back here where you can kind of do some stuff that, that goes back. Um, you can also use these to build out over this kind of canyon. The ravine. That, the ravine <laughs> that drops down in the middle of the map. Um, and then you have your rolling green hills. Um, so this gives you some vehicle-based terrain to work with to build your, your map. But we also included some uh, Forerunner structures kind of in this little dip down here. In addition though, players can build uh, down into the ravine between the, the rock walls. Um, so you, that's all usable area for you if you want to have some of your structures embedded. Um, as well as doing that on the, the outside. Uh, which we give you some range to kind of build your structures out um, away from this if you wanted to just use the for forge pieces in their rawest form and not use any of the terrain as well. The circle in the center of the Forerunner structure, was it, originally you were not allowed to go up that high. And again, design was like, oh, that's that could be a great target. That could be something that vehicles fly through. I mean, who knows what you guys will come up with. So again, Art relented and we pushed up all the boundaries just so people could have fun and it still looks pretty. That's a great thing about Forge too is its flexibility in that Forge isn't necessarily always about player versus player and shooting. I mean this Forge could be just simple jumping puzzles, it could be vehicle like races, it could be so many things which makes it really exciting.